I've made 65 quid today and that just is not enough so um, I'll probably have to work Friday night as well and maybe Saturday to try and make that up. I'm just another player in the gig economy and uh, it's hand to mouth on a month to month basis. The BBC are making a new documentary series. If you're working and finds it a little bit difficult to stay afloat, they want to hear from you. On the rails, delays and cancellations. New documentary series on the real story behind working Britain. Call us. If you're at work and fighting to stay afloat. Last year, local radio stations up and down the country played adverts, asking people to phone in if they were struggling to make ends meet, despite having a job. We've got nothing in the bank. We haven't even got a pension. We're doomed. Calls came in from all over the UK. Working absolutely stupid hours. Frequently, skin tone payday, month after month. Salaries or two paychecks away from disaster or being homeless. I can't afford to keep living like this. Many asked not to be identified. Please don't tell them who I am. But some wanted to share their stories. There's just a massive gap in there between living expenses and what you can actually earn. Go! And nobody should have to be doing two and three jobs just to feed the kids. We followed nine families for a year as their financial futures hung in the balance. I must have been doing about 120 hours a week. I don't want her to work as hard as I do. Hell no! Being broke is not the same as being broken. Go. So what does Just About Managing really mean for millions of us from all walks of life and all over Britain? I've just got to keep going. Keep buggering on. That's what Churchill said. Ooh, that's a big one coming up. <laughs> Bill! You're going to get flooded. <laughs> You're actually quite on the edge here. I'm living the high life, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, see that come close. Bloody hell. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, most people would be sitting indoors chilling out right now. <laughs> Six months ago, Steve and his 22-year-old son, Billy, were both working full-time and shared a home. Now Steve's lost his permanent job and the accommodation that came with it, and they've ended up living in tents on the beach. Dad, <laughs> do you think I might have to move soon? That's as far as it's going to get, the tide's going out. That's it, mate. It ain't going to get up any higher than that. The, way, the waves get bigger at the moment, it's right. Steve's on a list for a council house in Hastings, but demand is high and available housing is low. What they put down, the women in band B in need of extra space, is what they put down for us. I think we've got enough space. <laughs> right, out here. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so what you have to do to be in category A, I don't know. Winter's coming, and life for Billy and Steve is about to get even tougher. Storm Brian has arrived just in time for the weekend. We have some very strong winds to a storm is due to batter the south coast and finding a safe place to shelter will need money. Yeah, um, uh, but the uh, corner fire needs to get hedge trimmer for that. Billy can earn up to £200 a week assisting a mate who's a tree surgeon. But his hours aren't guaranteed. Yeah, well, I'll find out about getting stuff and then, um, yeah, that should, should be a problem. Great pickers required, must be hardworking, motivated and committed to join our team for approximately four weeks harvest. With the unemployment rate in Hastings higher than the national average, Steve's finding it difficult to get a job. I'd rather go to see one of these agencies today. Get the arse in gear so I've got a job start for next Monday. Yeah, I love. A recruitment agency may be the best chance Steve has to find a full-time job. I'll just come and see if there's uh, any chance of getting me a job like. So you're local? Yeah. Where do you live? <laughs> I'm, I don't actually live somewhere. I've been living in a tent at pet level on the beach with my son oh, in Lord. another tent. So, and the council don't want to house us. They don't care. They, they, they say it's not a priority because you know because I'm an older person. I've got no dependents. But you've got a child. He's 22 years old. Oh. 
at this moment in time, we've got some Please. positions Hello. for industrial cleaners. It's temporary work, but especially in your circumstances at the moment, if you go for a permanent job, they're going to say, well, where you live in. And if you divulge too much, they're going to go, hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand what you're saying. Flying discs. In a plate. Finding work without a fixed home address isn't the only issue. Even living in a tent on a beach doesn't improve Steve's chances of getting a council flat on the Sussex Housing Lottery. There's thousands and thousands of people who are bidding on the house and then they wheedle it down to who's the most vulnerable five and then they each go and look at the property and then you've got a top band as in A for people most wanting. Woman and child, she's going to get in the top five, you know. Some mental health issues might get in the top five. Or, I don't know, a refugee might get in the top five. Some that's got a higher state of vulnerabilities. I've been a local for 47 years and I'm class is not as important as a refugee because he's come to his country and he's had hardship and he, he needs a place straight away sort of thing. But I don't resent them. I'm not angry at them, it's not their fault. Hi, I was just listening to your advertisement on the local radio station. We don't own the house that we live in. I don't have a penny of savings. So I don't want to be a millionaire by any stretch of the imagination. I would just like to be comfortable and know at the end of the month we're not looking for money to put in the electricity meter or pay the council tax. It's a struggle. It really is a struggle. My rent's £415 a month. It takes around three weeks to earn my rent. I borrow money from my parents, my friends, my siblings. Um, my friend fills my freezer for me. Make sure that I have food. I don't know how I'm going to survive these next couple of months. It's really hard to say this all out loud. Over the last five years, Cambridge has seen the highest rise in rental prices in the UK. Renting a double room in a shared house can cost over £700 a month. How's this get started? 17-year-old Tyrone grew up in a village not far from here. A year ago, he left home after his relationship with his mother broke down. The night I'd left my mum's house, I popped in to see one of my mates because I was, I was literally I was an emotional wreck. And I was like, I don't know what I'd do. I've just left my parents. And they went, where are you going? I went, I'm going to Cambridge. And I went, no, you're not. You can stay here for the night and we'll give you a lift up to Cambridge in the morning. Tyrone has got a job at McDonald's, but because he's under 18, he's struggled to get housing benefits. So he's been moving from place to place, sleeping on friends' sofas, and trying to stay off the streets. I lived in a, a caravan trailer for maybe a week and a half. And from there, I lived in the bungalow of a disabled woman. And I was there about th uh, three days. When she'd asked me to leave, Tom said, come home with me. He said, come home with me, put a roof over your head. I'm, I'm always worrying where I am going to be sleeping. That's probably the thing that scares me the most. For the past three weeks, he's been living rent-free with his co-workers, Tom and Steve, while he looks for a room to rent. Hello, my name is Tyrone, and I'm just ringing about your advert on Gumtree. If you could give me a room. I can't afford a flat, so I'm, at the moment I'm looking at just a room. I went to a place yesterday, just a bedroom and a private bathroom. I thought, this is, this is amazing, that I really like this. And he was basically like, I want a grand in deposit. So I'm thinking, how do I get that money quick enough? And then he wants £500 straight away. So he wants 1500 up front. There's, there's people out there who can afford that. Me, on, on a paley rate of £5.35 an hour, working at McDonald's, it's not possible to even afford a place like that. If I was to move away from Cambridge, I'd lose my job. But I want to stay in Cambridge. 
And the only way I can do that is if McDonald's give me £10 an hour. £10 to me would mean a lot. I wouldn't have to be worrying about where I am going to be sleeping. Tyrone is on a zero hours contract and earns £5.35 an hour, over £3 less than the UK living wage, which is calculated by an independent commission and is based on what they estimate people need to maintain a decent standard of living. Unlike the minimum wage, employers are not obliged to pay it. They came up to me at work the other day. What was it you said to me in the... I was serving a customer. My voice went really squeaky. The customer laughed. I went, sorry about that. <laughs> went over to Steve. Asked for certain fries and it did it again. Can I get two small fries, please, or something like that? <laughs> I think you said, can you go through, through puberty twice? <laughs> and I, I, I actually tried to give him like some heartfelt, like, it's okay, it only happens once. <laughs> Everyone's voice breaks every now and again. Let's change subject, <laughs> yeah, good <laughs> This week I requested Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all got declined. I've asked for every available hour I can get and I'm still getting nothing. Okay, that's the problem, like you're on a zero hour contract. Like even if you complain, even if you say, uh, I want to work more hours a day, you have no obligation to do anything about it. That's why we have the campaign to scrap zero hour contracts. Tyrone knows that his arrangement with Tom and Steve won't last forever so he's determined to find a room of his own soon and not end up on the streets again. Just going to the bench that I stayed on when I spent two weeks on the streets and I didn't have anyone there for me. I was going into work smelling and the council refused to help me. This is the bench. Slept on this bench. It's ridiculous. I owe Tom and Steve everything. I, but the thing is, I've got nothing to give to them. I, I reckon if I lost Tom and Steve, it'd break me. Like, I haven't got anyone as close as them two. When you got it in your head, if I overthink it way too much, like on a night, I won't sleep at all. I spend a whole night up thinking about it. Like that one wish now, which I probably will, I will never get, which is to see my mum, just to give her a hug. Sofa surfing mainly affects young men. Falling out with parents is the main reason so-called sofa surfers don't even register in the official statistics. Falling through the cracks of government records, the hidden homeless, those who sofa surf are the homes of friends and family. The number living in temporary accommodation has risen by about two-thirds since 2010. MPs called it a national crisis. Yesterday, I was cooking. What did you cook? I see no one's brought me any empanadas. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my okay. empanadas? Angelica was born in Ecuador. In her late 20s, she moved to Spain to look for work with her ex-husband and two children. But after the 2008 economic crash, she lost her job. She's been working in London for the past seven years and is now part of the migrant population that makes up one third of the capital's workforce. Mira, esto me llegó también, no sé qué es. María Angélica Bolaños, exitosamente has ganado un año del curso de la ESO de Entry One T con este nivel. Yes. <laughs> Angelica rents a one-bedroom flat 
But to make room for her 18-year-old son, Angel, she's had to convert her living room into a second bedroom. Nosotros tenemos los dos. Él es ahora actualmente el que me da valor y yo también. He's studying full time to become an accountant, but also has to work to support himself and his mom. Me hubiese gustado que estudie nada más, pero es la situación económica que él tiene que trabajar por la madrugada. La atención. Chao, mami. As well as studying English all day, Angelica works night shifts in London's richest district, Kensington and Chelsea. She's a cleaner at a luxury car dealership where a sports car can cost £300,000. She entraba at 6 de la tarde y lo que más sorprendente es que se ganan venden coches tan caros y nosotros pues ganamos tan un sueldo tan bajo. Angelica works with Freddie. The two cleaners are not employed by the car dealership, but by an agency who pays them £7.50 an hour, nearly £3 less than the London living wage. Like the UK living wage, it's not legally binding. Employers can either choose to pay it or not. Yo no, o sea, no éramos prohibidos tocar los coches. Que era inglesa, pues ellos iban cada día a sacarles brillo a, las, a los coches. Por hora ganaban 20 libras. Mi compañero aquí del trabajo me dijo: Vamos a un sindicato. Adiós. Hasta mañana. Bye, bye. Y pues mira, ahora por habernos inscrito en el sindicato. Y por pedir el living way, el sueldo digno, que es 9.75, entonces nos han suspendido. Following a dispute about hours, Angelica and Freddie have been suspended without pay and have asked for help to fight for the London living wage from their union. Hello, good morning. Buenos días, Petros. Petros set up the union in 2014 to support vulnerable workers and pressure companies and job agencies to pay employees a fair wage. Qué, qué impactante, o sea, no me esperé, van y está suspendido tú y tú. Ya sé que se oh, siente mal. O sea, me, me puse bloqueada. O pronto o tarde, vamos a sacar la justicia, eso es seguro, ¿ok? He venido aquí al sindicato y tú eres el único que nos has dado ánimos y estamos en pie de lucha y o sea, dueños del mundo, podríamos decir, porque son poderosos. A una clina, pues no. Para el sábado que vamos a ir a la, a la protesta. Angelica and Freddie's strike, two cleaners against a multi-million pound company, will be one of the smallest strikes in British history. Algo de nosotros tendrán que decir, porque la emigración es mano de obra. No estoy haciendo, sabe, estoy pidiendo el living way. On the south coast, Steve hasn't been able to find any work, and tonight's forecast storm is imminent. So they've spent what spare cash they have on supplies to protect their camp. With nowhere else to go, they have no choice but to prepare for the approaching gale force winds. This makes it fun. Because you've got something to laugh at, because it's good. We know what's going to happen, it's going to go. <laughs> That's the only downside. I fucked my pan up. Knackered. I'm not freaking out because I've lived by the sea a lot in my life. If it happens, we run. <laughs> you do. Not good, is it? Severe weather warning. So there was no yellow warning for tonight. No yellow warning for tomorrow, but there's yellow warning for Saturday, and it's already this bad today. My tents are barely withstanding this. Shame, isn't it? This is how close it came last night. It literally, what, a foot away from that? That's how, that's how close it's come. 
um, to my tent. I knew it was quite close because I kept waking up and I kept getting a bit of water hit me on the face, but I thought it was raining. Obviously, it wasn't It wasn't raining because my vent's open. Where the waves were quite high anyway, it was obviously splashing down and the spray of it was going hitting my tent. And obviously, that's what kept hitting me in the face. <laughs> because Steve's been unemployed for a week, he's got no savings and he's down to his last £80. So he's applied for universal credit, but he's been told they can't pay anything for five weeks. I think the rollout of universal credit is the biggest disaster they've ever come up with. It's just fast, it's rubbish. Change over to universal credit is undoubtedly having a huge impact. Aisling's Food Bank has seen an 82% increase in referrals. So we're seeing people at breaking point. People are desperate, angry, frustrated, afraid and worried. However, advanced payments are available for those who need extra help. Bullshit. This universal credit is, as it says there, chaos. Absolute chaos. It's a joke. They don't allow for circumstances like this. It's just wrong. It's wrong. It's totally wrong. It's a joke. A new welfare revolution is underway. Universal credit merges a number of separate benefits into one. By design, all new claimants will face at least a month without payment. But it's not just people who can't work that are struggling. Even those in work are finding it hard to make ends meet. Apart from my Weeks of sleeping on Tom and Steve's sofa is finally coming to an end for Tyrone. Enjoy your new room. Yeah. He's found a room to rent in a shared house for £80 a week. This will be like my ninth time moving in the last six months, and hopefully it'll be the last time. Go down the cash machine, get the rest of my money out, get ready for paying the rent and then worry about what's left. I don't have many options of places to go. I need somewhere fixed and start, start an actual life because the life I'm living at the moment, going from place to place, is not a life that any 17 year old should have. Yeah. Hi. This is where <laughs> This is gonna get another carpet put on it. I am gonna get the grind. My stepdad's gonna sort it all. The main thing oh, is I've got a roof over my head. You have a roof. What? You've got a wardrobe. You've got chest drawers. Is it possible to get a lock for the door? I'm having the door put back on. I'm just waiting for the man to put the door on properly because the last lock just knocked it off. But it's fine. I can put a lock on it. Yeah. Twenty, forty, sixty, eighty. 100, 120, 140, 150, 160. It leaves me with 30 quid. Tyrone has finally got his own room, but if he wants to keep it, he'll need a full week of shifts. Buckets on McDonald's, uh, they're not actually pockets. But I'm thinking it's because we're not allowed to accept tips or people could steal money. I don't want to be accused of stealing money, so it's probably a good idea. Being on a zero-hours contract means he might only get four or five hours work a week, not nearly enough to even cover his rent. I want McDonald's to change. I want people to get a real living wage. Bye. Second, end of zero-hour contracts. Because with a zero-hour contract, they can cut the shifts. So you can only get one shift a week. They control you of a zero hour contract. A few months ago, Tyrone joined colleagues in a strike to push for an hourly rate of £10 for all staff. When we strike against McDonald's, it, it, was, it was the best thing I'd ever, ever done. Like, the feeling it was amazing. So Tom and Steve organised the, the union before I joined. Um, so that's how I got involved. Just looking back at it, like, just, just mind blowing. <laughs> but I never expected me to ever do something like this. When workers protested in 2017, it was the first union strike against McDonald's in the UK. 
Hi. Who's rolling me a fag? Their actions persuaded McDonald's to pay a minimum rate of £8 an hour for all workers over 25. But given the average age of employees on an hourly rate is only 20, they're still fighting for workers like Tyrone to get fair pay. I don't know many people who's fighting one of the biggest corporations in like the UK, and I am. I just want to show everyone that don't matter how old or how young you are, you, um, if you fight for what you believe, then you're going to get it. Angelica and Freddie have been suspended without pay for the last week. You know where it is, huh? You know where South Kensington is? OK, we'll see you here. Okay. They're threatening to strike until their employment agency agrees to pay them the London living wage. Los pitos, los pitos, ahí están. Petros only put the call out to his union members three days ago, and over 50 people have turned up to protest alongside them. Están hechos cargos estos, pero nadie se moja. Pero yo les dije que cuando lleguemos a una victoria va a ser para todos la cartera, ¿sabes? Basta de esclavitud que ahora estamos en, en otro tiempo. Today with three days notice and you can see how many people have turned up. I swear to God, we're gonna be coming back here day in, day out. We're gonna be going inside, we're gonna be going outside. Cada día de protesta de un trabajador es un día de fiesta. As well as studying full-time, Angelica's son, Angel, also has a job as a cleaner. He works a four-hour shift before college every morning and earns around £160 a week. Now his mother's suspended, they're relying on his income to survive. When you wake up, you want to keep sleeping. I have to, because I have to pay my transport, uh, pay my food. I need to help my mum, so I might as well to work. It's 8am and Angel's returning home from work to get ready for college. This morning, he's got some positive news about his mum's strike action. She's made the national headlines. Mira, that's famous. Now, when we join a union and ask for a fair amount of money, enough to live on this expensive city, they want us out. <laughs> it's very hard working and studying. When I lived in Spain, I did not feel poor. It was only when I came to London that I felt poor. Hello, I'm Rachel. Have you been to a food bank before? First, no. time. First time. First time. Yeah. So, this is a list of food. Yeah. So, milk. Yeah. Would you like milk? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All of this. <laughs> oh, everything. Yeah. <laughs> Tinned vegetables. Yeah. And um, pasta, rice, or couscous. Rice. Y estoy muy agradecida de la gente que está aquí. Que no me esperé que la verdad me vaya llevando cosas para comer para mi hijo. Ha habido gente que en realidad sí se preocupa de nosotros. 
Ahora mismo, como estoy suspendida del trabajo, estoy corta de dinero, pero me emociono mucho porque hay gente que sí, sí te ayuda. Y voy contenta porque llevo aquí comida para comer con mi hijo. Gracias. The record number of food parcels last year has been handed out according to the Dressel Trust. 1.2 million food parcels in this country. Those are people who are really, really suffering. If people vote Conservative again, is that going to carry on? And the answer seems to be yes. Come to get some help with some food. Hello, mate. Hello, mate. Nice to meet you. I'm safe. We serve people at least three times in the crisis period, so we'd love to help you so you can get back on your feet. Sweet corn, it's my favourite. I feel embarrassed about using the food bank, but if you haven't got the money, what, what, I can't starve, can I? I can't let my boys starve, so it's a necessity I've got to do. Cheers, mate. Thanks Pleasure. so much. Yeah. Cheers. Ten years ago, around 25,000 people in the UK used food banks. Now, that number has risen to over 1.5 million. I feel really bad taking this stuff. Someone else could have had this, couldn't they? Why? We need it just as much as they do, mate. No, but I've got money, I've got just some yeah, for days, how, I Bill, this stuff. Bill, for how long, mate? For how long? Don't just, just, you know, get with reality, mate. I ain't got a pot of piss in, this is fucking, people were nice enough to let us have it, mate, I'm telling you. Don't think I could have walked in there and got it myself because I'm 22 and I'm young, I shouldn't have been using a food bank, should I really? You know what I mean? I should, I should be sort of supplying it for myself. But How are you going to do that? I've got money in my pocket. Today, That's what I say. I'm on about in the long term future, mate. Hello. I currently work, but things are pretty tight. And I'm, it's getting to a desperation point because I'm keeping my family with a roof over their head. I'd like there to either be more hours or more money, just so I don't have to panic. I'm 52, I'm a single mum, I have a teenage daughter, I work part-time, and every month I panic about paying direct debit. I can't do things with my daughter because I can't afford to, so I think that has an impact on our relationship. Um, I also get benefits, which they make me feel like I'm a criminal for claiming them. Fundamentally, at the moment, it's really, really tough. You can offer a cigarette? Yeah, have you got a cigarette? Uh, yes. It's been a struggle for Tyrone to pay his £80 a week rent, so he's moved back in with Tom and Steve. Right, we're done. Let's go. Yeah, Tom. Have a good day. But this time, they've given him his own room. Basically, I just put the camp bed. Um, it wasn't like, couldn't go out properly, like completely. I, I, I kind of sleep like that. I only ever taken one picture when I was 13 with my mum. Um, it was on my SD card, that was on my other phone that got stole. So I never get a picture of my mum. What's this behind you? Oh, it's my birth certificate. Why did you get a birth certificate for your bed? Mm, I don't know, I guess it's the only thing of my mum and my dad have got together, technically. It's my mother, my father. And I know I've never seen them ever together, but they're like, I've got my mum and my dad here, so if I have it over my head, it's like, it's like they're watching down on me. I mean, I got my wish now. I got, I got a room for myself. I've got a bed, and I've got a happy living space. <laughs> but just as Tyrone gets settled, there's more change. Tom and Steve's successful strike action against McDonald's has attracted the attention of the Bakers Union. Go on, mate. Right. 
they've been offered jobs in London. And Tyrone faces the prospect of being homeless again. Resigned from work today. Resigned? As in... Like, handed in our, our notice to Jamie. What happens with where I go? Obviously, you can't live here because you'll, you'll have nowhere to go. And the, the problem we've got is we're not, like, your legal guardians or anything. So, like, we're moving to London. You come with us. Unless you don't want to come with us. Um, no, no, no. I, I, I generally I want to come with you guys. Like, you guys are, are my family and I want to come with you guys no matter what. It's going to be a bit hectic over the next few weeks, but... Once we're set up, it should be good. Whatever happens, me and Tom will look after you. We'll make sure you're fed and watered. <laughs> fed and watered? Yeah. We need to deep clean the flat as well, so we get as much as that deposit back as we can. And have a party. Yes. Party. That is the main yeah, thing. It's the end of an era. It would be desirable if you wrote that. In a few days, Tyrone will be leaving Cambridge for good and moving to London. Our new house is uh, four bedrooms. One room is obviously going to be Ty's, but it's going to be, it's a really nice place. I think Ty's looking for work in like KFC or Burger King or something like that. It's just low, low paid jobs, so it's, it's whatever you can find, really, isn't it? So I'm excited to go to London. Like, it's, a, it's a choice I've made. Um, I, I, want, I want to be with Tom and Steve as well. Um, but in the later future, who knows where I could be? Could be doing anything. He's handed in his resignation at McDonald's and said goodbye to his friends but he hasn't spoken to his mother in over three months. So he's planning one last trip home. The plan for today, hopefully, is I'm gonna go down to my mum's, um, hopefully get in contact with her and start talking to her, but mainly to say goodbye and that I'm moving on. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get your hopes up too much from what you've said about them. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna. From what he's told me, I don't think it's going to go very well. They probably won't answer the door. I know when he's gone before, they haven't. Have you eaten? I'm all right. I don't laugh at much. Sure. Yeah, I don't laugh at much. It's late October. Billy's only working part time, and Steve's not had a single job offer from the recruitment agency. They'll need money from somewhere if they're going to get off the beach before winter. We've got to save up then. We've got to, we've got to save up about fourteen hundred quid then. Yeah. It's silly money. Silly yeah. money. What was it? A month. A month's deposit in hand, and then you have to have do you have to have a full month's rent as well. Well, you've got to get a full time job though. A day here and a day there ain't going to be enough, mate. Because I can't do it on my own. I need to get full-time work. Jobs that no one, no one else wants to do. Beggars can't be choosers. I just have to do anything at the moment. Absolutely anything. Hello? Yep, definitely 100%. Six o'clock time or? I'll be there on the dock, mate. Bye. Cheers, mate. Start tomorrow night. So start tomorrow? Hopefully. I'll come and help you tomorrow. Just hopefully this time it goes all right and I get some money behind me. In 300 yards, turn left onto Chapel Park Road. Steve's finally been offered a job delivering food six nights a week for a local curry house. Which way am I going? Right, this way. Listen to me. I'm listening, but you're, 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 you're going left, right, right, I'm right. telling you where to go. Just listen to what I'm saying. It's about 10 miles behind us, that fucking thing. Turn left onto Tower Road and turn right onto Bohemia Road. Is that control? Yeah, yeah. It might be this one. He's going to earn £160 a week, 
but won't get paid until Friday, so he's relying on tips to pay for petrol. Couple of quid tip. If I take my time, sit back, go at 30 mile an hour, I do six deliveries in the night, and one person tips, I've done a, I've got, I've earned a pound tip for about six deliveries. Where if I can get 12 deliveries in the same time, I've got another set one in six chance of getting a tip, because that increases my chance of getting money for fuel. Carry else is there. It's 300 yards. What number? Oh no, it's not. Oh, it's no, it's not. No. Bill, you're fucking stressing me, mate. I'm telling you now. Hang on. It's St Mary's Terrace. The, <laughs> the fucking curry house is the White Rock, isn't it? Yeah. It's taking us to the fucking curry house. You're stressing me out, mate. Fucking typing in the curry house is only dress. 18 St Mary's Terrace. Every job I deliver to is a chance to get the tip. So far, I've got two pounds tonight to cover about ten quid's worth of petrol I fucking burn. All right, but chill out. You don't need to get so stressed here about every fucking thing. Just listen to thing. what I say to you, Bill. Just listen to what I say, mate. You get and stressed I won't have, have a heart attack over it, will I? No, you have a heart attack over the simplest thing. You want me to do all the fucking footwork and get us off the What's fucking beach, fuck and then you tag along and fucking enjoy the rewards that I've had to fucking earn. I'll tell you what, when we get back shot. to the curry house, fucking drop me off. You all right? I'll tell yeah, you what, you get the fuck will. out in a minute and we'll come will. from there. I will, yeah, I will. I'll get, yeah, I will get out. I will get out because I don't appreciate fuck all what no, I do. I don't appreciate nothing because you don't help me. And you do everything. Yeah, I fucking do. Of course you fucking do. Mine and my dad's relationship is very complicated because he's very stubborn. He doesn't like people looking after him or stuff like that. And yeah, and he always knows best, which is, yeah, which is annoying. But I'm the only one that stayed with him. So the only one that stayed with him. And um, yeah, I think if I'd have left as well, he'd have had nobody, no, no one. In the past, my old man's had some bad stuff happen to him. Like uh, my mother, she she cheated on him, God knows how many times, and then he got custody of me and my two sisters. And then all this stuff just spiraled, which led to him suffering from depression and stuff like that. He tried to kill himself a couple of times. There was no way I was going to let my dad come down to the beach on his own. You know, he's 50 years old. So whether regardless he calls you all the names under the sun half the time or I'm doing his head in, he's just gonna have to bump it, isn't he, really? Once he's got a roof over his head and he's, he's safe and he's warm, then I can start cracking on with what I want to do. I hate fishing. I'm 25 years of age. I'm a single mum. I own a grand a month. My rent is 450 a month. Constantly wondering if I'm going to meet my rent. So one pay check away from losing everything. All I have is my house and my daughter. And that will be took straight off me by the High Court if I fail to meet my rent. Y somos preparados para, para todo y seguiremos adelante como... Angelica and Freddy have been off work for a month. La pregunta es, ¿para qué ahora? Sí. Es de repente un problema. Acusarles y quejar de ustedes es por haber sindicalizado, por haber votado por la huelga. Y eso es la verdad. Es, la verdad. es que es la verdad por eso. Today, they've finally been granted a meeting with their employment agency. Their dispute may require legal advice, so they've requested Petros attend. After more than five hours of negotiating, they failed to reach an agreement, and their agency terminated the meeting. Although they'll be paid while they're suspended, their agency is still refusing to grant their demand for the London living wage. Qué desilusión. Qué desilusión, ¿no? Y no pedir el living wage que necesitamos porque este Londres es muy caro. 
I'm just going to cut to the chase. Long story short, we got that suspension unpaid paid. They agreed to do that. The guy running the show got on and turned around and said, so that means obviously you won't, you won't be striking then. And we said, well, well, no, the points of the disputes, the dispute which gave rise to the strike, i.e. Their, their claim for living wage hasn't been met. You haven't agreed to pay them a living wage. So the, so, so the ballot is, is live and legitimate and their right to strike is, is as strong as ever. It's as if they just presume that they've got some sort of security to fall back on, you know. Like they can't fathom that they depend entirely 100% on their wages for their existence. You know, the idea that they don't have a bank full of savings or, or, or you know, family to, 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 to prop them up, I don't think, like, honestly, I don't, I don't think this guy actually got that at all. Señor Padre, damos gracias a ti, Señor, que hoy tenemos eh, un plato de comida para servirnos. Angel and Angelica have had to rely heavily on Angel's wages. And although Angelica will now receive back payment, the future is uncertain. ¿Tú de dónde vas a sacar los 900 para pagar el alquiler? Si, si, si no puedes ni pagar ahora, ¿de dónde vas a sacar ese dinero? Es que eso, eso, yo lo que ya no quiero es tú es que trabajes, man. Yo te puedo mandar dinero a España. Eso yo también quiero que me entiendas a mí. Uno ya tiene 50 años, ya yo 18, eh, ya no cuides de mí. Yo, yo sé que, que quieres seguir cuidándome y ya yo ya me voy a instalar bien aquí en Londres. Y yo nunca vi, nunca crecí con mi madre. Y yo nunca disfruté de mi madre. Y yo pues, ya que yo no pude ser nada en la vida, por falta de dinero, porque éramos muy pobres. No teníamos ni para comer, pero sin embargo yo he venido acá, a este país, porque yo quiero que seas algo importante. Ya que yo no pude ser, mira en mí, por no haber sido preparada. Y aparte de eso, soy ad explotada. <risa> Now both of them are working, Billy and Steve are saving some money and finally have a way off the beach. Steve's been offered a caravan to rent if they can raise £650 for the deposit. It's going to be weird, isn't it? Because we've been here for six months. Can't wait. Oh, I can't wait. Just to sit, just to sit on my feet up and watch a bit of telly. Really can't wait. You're the one I worry about. Because right. My job's full time, and it's, it's that that place has been there for like thirty years. You know what I mean? And Aston's established. Yeah. Your your job's not guaranteed one day from the next. No, no, my job's not guaranteed every every week. But if it comes to it. I can't, to, can't um, pay the rent, mate. I'm on the road. No, I'll be able to pay the, I'll be able to pay the rent. It's things you, there's a lot of things you have to do, Bill, but you don't do it. Right. Right, I better shoot off then, Dad. I'll see you later. Hello, right. <sighs> oh, God. If Billy pays his half the rent, well then I'll be able to survive. Uh, Bill's my big worry. It just go to work while it's working at the moment, and then when it runs out, it just say, Oh, well, it's all right, Dad, I'll go and sign on, or it's all right, Dad, I'll go and do something else. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, I do, yeah, I do worry about him. But he's a worry. It's been over a year since Tyrone left home. Nothing's changed. <laughs> I keep losing my breath and I'm a bit shaky now. But... Today is his last chance to put the past behind him before he starts a new life in London. Mum? If you can hear me, please, can you open the door? I need to talk to you guys. If, if you can hear me, 
I've I've come I've come to say goodbye. <sighs> right, I'm I'm gonna go now. I hope at some point in the future you'll be in contact with me. I love you. I've done everything in the last eight months to try and make my parents proud of me. It's just so hard. I just want to say that I love them. <laughs> That's all I want to say. After weeks of hard work, Billy and Steve have finally saved up £650 for their deposit and can move into their caravan. This is the beginning of the end, this isn't it? <laughs> the beginning of the end. The beginning of the end, Mike. Shit. It stayed warm. I'd stay it. <laughs> I'm well happy I'm getting off the beach, fucking over the moon, but I will miss it, yeah. I mean, that is lovely, isn't it? Not often you can walk out your front door and see a view like that, is there? Running out of time here, Bill. Well, I don't know what you're up to, mate. Don't know what I'm up to. Well, you don't seem to be doing a lot, do you? Really? I've got work to go to, remember? Leave your tent up and store stuff that we can't take today. Right, I'll start taking some of this out of time. Take what you need tonight, shove the rest back inside. We've got to try and make this look tidy, Bill. Oh, I need that. I need that. Mm -hmm. I need that. Um. <laughs> it's quality. Well, I need, I'm, I'm pushing these two together. Then I'll be like this. Move and I'll get a telly on telly on the wall. Oh, I live in the dream. We're loving it. Oh Bill, we've got all plates and bowls as well, mate. Yeah. We're like aliens. We're doing we're like aliens. Well, it's like, we've never seen this before. What's this? Oh, that does that. It's uh, a stone. <laughs> Fucking hell! I've really got, got the short straw here. Look what he's got. He's got chest of drawers there. He's got everything, look. He's got his own like, walk-in closet. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> hell! Been here two minutes and you're slagging me off, mate. Look. Look. Well, looks, isn't it, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm well happy. I've just got to be pucker. I mean, brilliant, this is. So I'm going to work hard to pay the rent each month. Because I don't want to go back to the tent, I want to stay here. I'm happy. Yeah, I'm well happy. <laughs> It's been four weeks and Angelica and Freddie have still not returned to work. So they're taking their protest for a fair wage back to the streets. Right, we're just about to strike at the fiery showroom. How are they going to strike for a living wage? And we want to speak to the guy that did that. No, wait, no, 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 wait. They sell the most expensive cars in the world, so we're never going to give up this fight. After a few days, further protests and unwelcome publicity from the press, their employment agency agrees to meet at the union office to discuss their pay. 
the principle of living wage is make sure that all of your employees, all of your workers are out of poverty, right? That is what being committed to the principle of the living wage means. La verdad, pues mira, hemos sacado buenas conclusiones. Ya nos pagan el living wage. Eso, mamita. <laughs> ¿Ves? They didn't just win the living wage for themselves. What they also did was win the living wage for around what we can calculate to be around 50 workers. So we have been giving to those who are just about managing, we've taken four million people out of paying income tax altogether. We've given a tax cut to over 30 million people. We see record numbers of people in employment in this country. The reality of a working people is lower wages and less job security, with in-work poverty now at record levels. My tent's finally give in to this weather. <laughs> that ain't good. It's on its last legs, bless it. I'll leave that there for a minute. My generation's definitely been given a rough deal from society, yet. Yeah. There's not much opportunities or anything like that out there. You've got too many people running the country that actually don't have a clue what's really going on. They just don't have a clue. Every politician that comes along always says the same lines over and over and over and over again and no nothing ever happens. They don't care about someone like me sleeping on the beach for seven months. They don't care. That's what's wrong. They no nobody cares. And uh, yeah, sad, but that's the way it is. For fuck's sake, actually get with the programme, actually see what's going on and do something about stuff that really matters. You know, sorting the housing out and sorting... It's not just sorting everything out because everything's a fucking mess. I think something needs to happen. There needs to be a drastic, drastic, drastic change.